The diagram below shows a simplified electrolytic cell used to electroplate a ring. Okay, so let's try to get an idea here of what would happen before we even read the question. So here we've got a pure piece of chromium. So what that usually means is that we are going to take some of this chromium, right, which is solid, and we are going to have to try get this chromium onto that ring. Now, the way that we do that is we oxidize this chromium. So we convert this chromium into ions, and then those ions will be attracted to the ring, and then they would undergo reduction. So you would, you would, convert, you would convert the Cr3 plus into pure chromium once again. Okay, so that's just a little summary of what we're gonna do here. You're taking the solid chromium, you're converting it into ions. Those ions then move over to the ring and then they get reduced to form pure chromium again. First question, define the term electrolyte. So there's a whole bunch of definitions that the memo allows, but one of them is it is a substance, whoopsie, what's up with you, Kev? A substance whose, okay, that's not how you spell I know that is how you spell it. Whose solution contains ions. Okay, then the next one. Is the pure chromium metal, which is this one, the anode or the cathode? Well, what I've always told you guys is that cathode is always the place where reduction happens. I don't talk about the whole positive negative because that's different for electrolytic cells and galvanic cells. But if we talk about anode and cathode like this and oxidation and reduction, these things never change, whether we are looking at electrolytic or galvanic. So we know that we what we said here earlier was that this is gonna be pure chromium. And we need to turn this chromium into Cr3+. plus. So if I look at table 4b, and I look for this chromium reaction, I can see it's over here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take that chromium and we wanna convert it into chromium ions. So the reaction that's gonna take place here, let's write this a bit better, would look like that. Now that is oxidation. So oxidation goes with anode. So we can say that this is the anode, why? Because the subs, the chromium is being oxidized. That's what you could say. You could say the CR is being oxidized. Then it says write down the half reaction that takes place at the ring. Well, what happens now is that these CR3 pluses, they move over to the ring. And then what happens is that the reverse um, of this happens. So, well, the reverse of this one. So now we're just going to write it the normal way going forward. So it's gonna be Cr3 plus, plus three electrons gives you Cr. So it says write down the half reaction that takes place at the ring, that's the half reaction. So let's write it over here. Okay, then it says calculate the total charge transferred when the mass of the pure chromium changes by two grams. Now this is interesting because the uh, uh, the CAPS curriculum never used to really include these questions. Um, so this is a fairly new um, type of question for CAPS learners. The IEB learners have done these ones before, but for CAPS it's quite new. So let me explain what we can do here. So it says calculate the total charge transferred when the mass of the pure chromium changes by two grams. Right, so guys, it's actually quite easy. Let me show you. Okay, so we know that this chromium is gonna become two grams less because this one's gonna become lighter because this chromium metal is gonna convert into ions. Okay, so what we do is we know that it's two grams. So we need to work out the number of moles quickly so we can use this formula. Have you guys seen that formula before? Haha, <laughs> it's a joke. Right, so we need the molar mass of chromium from the periodic table. Okay, now if you go look on the periodic table, that's gonna be 52. Okay, so we can say that N equals to the mass, which is two, and then the molar mass was 52. So if we had to go work this out, I'm not gonna round off, so we end up with one over 26. Okay, so we have the moles of uh, chromium. That is pure, pure, pure chromium, right? Now what we wanna do is we wanna see how many electrons is that? Because that is what 
that is what is being transferred here. It's charge, charge is the flow of electrons, okay? So we wanna convert this. So if we know that this is one and this is three, then the ratio of chromium to electrons is one to three. So the ratio of chromium to electrons is one to three. So if we have this much chromium, then if you multiply that by three, then we simply have this much or this many electrons or that many moles of electrons. Now, what we do, check this out guys. Can you remember what the charge of an electron is? The charge of an electron is on our periodic table and it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Yes, I should technically put a negative, but it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's how much one electron is. So we need to work out how many electrons do we have. We know how many moles of electrons we have, but we don't know how many electrons we have, okay? So this is where we have to use this formula now. You know, the Avogadro's number, because if we know the moles of electrons, then we can work out the number of electrons. Now, Avogadro's constant is on the formula sheet as 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So I'm just going to take this number over here and multiply it now with the 3 over 26. And if we had to do that, we should get the number of electrons as 6.9461. I'm just going to round to a few decimal places, 5, because this isn't the final answer, times 10 to the 22. That's how many electrons we have. Now, there isn't really a formula for this next one on the formula sheet, but to work out the total charge, which we can maybe call Q, um, all we do is we take the number of electrons, that's how many electrons we have, and each electron has a charge of that. We don't have to take the negative into account. So we just multiply those two together to see the total charge. I mean, think about it. If one electron, let's, let's give you an easy example. Let's say one electron has a charge of two coulombs, and let's say there are five electrons then how much charge do we have in total? Well, that's easy, two times five. That's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm taking the number of electrons and the total charge of one electron, and I'm just gonna multiply those two things together. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 multiplied, or let's say, multi yeah, let's just keep it like that, by uh, 6.94615 times 10 to the 22. And if we do that, we get about 11,000 electrons, so it's 11,000, I mean 11,000 coulombs, my bad, uh, 113.85 coulombs. So that is how much charge is transferred. Now, on the memo, the answer doesn't have to be exactly that. Uh, some students round off at different places, uh, so the range of answers that you are allowed is 11076.8, up to 11,580. Okay, so that's sort of what they said on the memo, that you're allowed to have an answer somewhere between that.